Hello, now we will look at the treatment of COPD and we will look at patients that are stable. We will make many videos explaining the treatment process for patients who are stable, exacerbated and uh, having infections and so on. So there will be a series of video lectures for this. So now if we look at the stable patients, we can see that we can use medications or not medications. This is the choice we have. First, we always try with using no medications. And four things that we can use is to stop smoking, give vaccinations, oxygen therapy and pulmonary rehabilitation. So once again, stop smoking, please give vaccinations, oxygen therapy and pulmonary re rehabilitation. So if we start with stop smoking, I just want you to picture this because this is the most important thing that you can do. 80%, 80% of people that have COPD are smoking. Let this sink in. In a hospital, all the patients that you see that have COPD, 80% of them are smoking. So, what's the most important thing that you can do? Let it sink in. Stop smoking. Give vaccinations. You need to give vaccinations because infections are causing most of the exacerbations of COPD. Exacerbation means an increased amount of symptoms. So if you give vaccinations against influenza or pneumococcal vaccinations, then you will decrease the exacerbation of COPD. So this is also very important. Oxygen therapy. This is clear. In COPD, we have less amount of oxygen in the body and therefore we need to give oxygen therapy uh, for some patients and this can be given at home or in the hospital and this will be dealt in another video then. Pulmonary rehabilitation this is also something that you can do training itself this means that you you exercise and you do exercises that are good for your lungs and this will be dealt in another video also. So now we'll look at the stable treatment and the medication part. So the we will use some abbreviations. Saba, Laba, Sama, Lama. It sounds very similar. Saba, Laba. You see? Ba, Sa, La. This is the difference here. Then you have Sa, La and Sa, Ma, Lama. We will see what this means. Sa means short acting. La means long acting. Ba means beta agonist. And ma means, means muscarinic antagonist. So, first of all, what does short and long acting stand for? It stands for the duration of the effect of the medication itself. So we have a short acting and a long acting. One is very quick and have a short duration, let's say. One is long, uh, taking a longer time to uh, get an effect and it will take a longer time for the effect. For, so, so the duration will be longer. Beta agonist will mean that we have a receptor that is called beta and this medication that we give the patient will act on this beta receptor and we are dealing with beta 2 receptor here because beta receptors can be divided into 1, 2 and so on, 3, so we will use beta 2 in this case. An agonist mean that we act and activates the receptor. Agonist means that it acts on the receptor and activates it. So here we see we have a medication that is activating the receptor, which is called beta-2 in this case. Muscarinic antagonists mean that we have a muscarinic receptor, meaning the, the name of the receptor is called muscarinic. And the antagonist part means that it acts on it, but it blocks it. So this is different. So we act on it and block the receptor itself, instead of... Uh, this is, uh, if you compare it to the other one, it activates it, here it blocks it. Uh, so now we will deal with the different subgroups. Saba, as we said, is a short-acting beta-2 agonist. And we know the word, what, is, what, what, what it means now. So Saba, we will have two medications here. Remember, it, Saba, we have two. Of course, there will be others also, but I want, I want to focus on the most important ones. So please remember, when I say it's only two, then it can be maybe three also, in the future maybe more, okay? But at the point, I would say these are the most important. With albuterol and levalbuterol. Albuterol have a synonym which is called salbutamol in, in, in different countries. 
So for example, in United States, we use albuterol, but for example, in Europe, we can uh, give salbutamol. It's uh, almost the same thing. It's a synonym. And please don't mix it up with salmeterol. This is another medication, another group. So albuterol is the same thing as salbutamol and it is not the same thing as salmeterol. Please remember it. We will see what salmeterol is. So here we will come to uh, a beautiful island and the beautiful island is called Saba. This, this actually exists, okay? Uh, there exists an island in the world that is called Saba. And we will use this picture now to, uh, to remember that we are dealing with Sabas. And remember that in Saba we have two medications, albuterol and almost albuterol. It's called Lev albuterol. This is the difference here in the name. Albuterol and Lev albuterol can be given in a device. And this device is called a metered dose inhaler. We will see different types of devices that we have. We have mainly three main groups of devices. Metered dose inhaler, then we have dry powder inhaler, and then we have soft mist inhaler. And in this case, in Saba, this island, then we use metered dose inhaler for albuterol and levalbuterol. Now we we'll come to the long-acting beta-2 agonist, this is LABA. LABA, we will have six of them. Salmeterol, Formeterol, Arformo, Arformoterol, Indacaterol, Villanterol, Olodaterol. All are ending with terol. And there are different, just different combinations of terol. So LABA is terol. Why did I choose this uh, spider here? Because there exists a spider that is called LABA. Check it out on the internet. There exists an island that is called Saba. Uh, it, there exists a spider that is called Laba. And Laba is terrorizing. It's a terrorizing animal. Many people have uh, phobias against these animals. So remember that Laba is a terrorizing spider. And therefore, these medications are called terror. So not therefore, but we will remember it in that way. So we have salmeterol, indacaterol, vilanterol, olodaterol, formoterol, and a combination of formoterol, which is called arformoterol. So please remember, island for saba, spider for laba. Now, let's go one by one. Laba, we have six. Saba, we have two. Remember, in the island, we have two. In the spider picture, we have six. Two, six until now. Let's look at salmeterol. Salmeterol, we also have a meter dose inhaler in the right part here that you can see. And we have a name, this, this is just a company name, uh, Seravent Evohaler, 25 microgram. You don't need to remember it, but it's good to know because if you're a doctor and you want to give a LABA to a patient and you want to give a salmeterol, then you need to choose which ones do we have, and there are many companies. I just choose two ones, uh, two uh, most common ones here. Seravent, or I'm not allowed to say most common ones. Let's say like this. Uh, we, I have chosen to, to take some company names. There's no uh, whatsoever uh, affiliation with these companies, okay? So I don't represent these companies. There's no marketing done here, okay? Please remember it. I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm not a marketing guy. I'm giving these videos for free. So please take that into consideration. You can take any salmeterol you want, it's up to you. I'm using this one, CeraVent Evohaler, it's a meter dose inhaler, or you can choose a dry powder inhaler. As we said, there are three types, meter dose inhaler, dry powder inhaler, and soft mist inhaler. In Salmetron, we have dry powder inhaler, discus, it's called Cervant discus, 50 mi microgram, or a meter dose inhaler, Cervant evohaler, 25 microgram. Let's look at Formoterol. Formoterol, we have also a meter dose inhaler that is called 4Air, 12 microgram, or we have dry powder inhaler. And as you see, the abbreviations here, DPI, MDI, these are standing for dry powder inhaler and meter dose inhaler. So we have three types, let's say here, of a dry powder inhaler. We have a novelizer, formoterol novelizer, six microgram. We can use a turbo inhaler. This is another device. So in order for you to understand how this is, um, how this is uh, actually 
um, constructed. It's like we have three main types of inhaler. We said meet the dose inhaler, try a dry powder inhaler and soft mist inhaler. This is different functional devices, but these device, these three groups have subgroups. They have different forms of devices. As you see, the first one there in the dry powder inhaler is a novelizer type. You call this a green one a novelizer. The other one uh, on the left side down there, we have oxys. It's a turbo inhaler. So when you see this uh, this. Uh, uh, type of inhaler, it's called a turbo inhaler. And the other one here is an aerolyzer in the middle one, aerolyzer. And the right one, it's called just metered dose inhaler. That's, a, that's the group of it, okay? So we have a novelizer, we have a turbo inhaler, and we have an aerolyzer, which is called Foradil, that's the company's name, 12 microgram. Oxys is the company's name, and Forer is also a company's name, okay? So now you know if your doctor, which should I choose from all these? Uh, formoterols and then you I have given you some examples and these are all labas as we said six types of laba which was long-acting beta agonist beta 2 receptor agonist okay our formoterol let's uh, see this one we have for example a nebulizer so did you see this is another type of device and uh, uh, a company's name here is Brovana and we use 15 microgram for example Indacaterol. Indacaterol, it's a dry powder breeze hailer. Breeze hailer. You see the, the, the size and uh, the look of this inhaler is totally different. And this, this is breeze hailer. Remember when you see this, this is a breeze hailer and it's in the group of dry powder inhalers. That's Indacaterol. Villanterol. Villanterol can only be given together with umeclidinium or fluticasone. Remember this, you cannot give Villanteron alone. All the others which we discussed until now can be given alone, monotherapy. But Villanterol are only be, can only be given in a combination. And this is a dry powder combination. And the device itself will be called Elipta in this case. And here I have three, three different. Why three? Because I can combine Villanterol with Umeclidinium. That's the red one. That's called, the company name is called Anoro. Then we have, or well not the company name. The company, the, the company is uh, is a is a is another name. And then, which I don't say now, but you can check it out. And then these company have different names for the different combinations. And we have Anoro, which is the left one. And then we have Relvar, which is in the middle one, and Tr uh, Trilogy, which is in the third one. And the difference here is that we have a Villanterol combined with Umeclidinium, then we have a Villanterol combined with Fluticasone, and then we have a Villanterol combined with Fluticasone and Umeclidinium. You see it? So you can combine Villanterol with Umeclidinium or Fluticasone, or you can combine all three of them. Then it's called Trilogy in this case. And this is all LABA, long-acting beta-2 agonist. The other ones, Umeclidinium and Fluticasone, are not LABA. It's another group, which we will see which ones. So we we'll continue soon. Uh, Olodaterol is a soft mist inhaler, for example, and we call this device Respimat. So when you see this type of device, it's called Respimat. And the company's name here, Will be not the company's name, but the uh, medication would be Striverdi Rispemat, 2.5 microgram, for example. That's an olodatoral monotherapy, so one type of uh, medication in it. That was Labas. Let's go to Samas. Sama, we only name one. Easy. Ipratropium. Ipratropium. Why do I have rice here? This is a type of rice that is called Sama. Please, please check it out on the internet. We can have a rice that is called Sama and therefore we will have this picture for Sama. And for Sama, for this rice, we have a picture of only one medication standing below it and that's called Ipratropium. So we have an island, Saba. We have then this spider, Laba. Then we have rice, Sama. Okay, and that it was two for the island, two medications for island, and it was four medic uh, six medications for the spider, so the laba. Then it was one medication for the sama, which is the rice, ipratropium. And ipratropium can be given as a metered dose inhaler, which is called atrovent, for example, atrovent. Okay, now we have four long-acting muscarinic antagonists, so that is lama, and lama, uh, we have theotropium, 
aclidinium, umeclidinium, and glucopyrrolate. Here you see the one which I mentioned already, umeclidinium. You remember when I talked about vilanterol being a combination with umeclidinium or fluticasone. Here you see umeclidinium is a lama. So there you had a combination of a laba and a lama. Laba was vilanterol, lama was the umeclidinium. And of course, this will be a llama. Picture of llama, that's obvious. So we have an island, we have a spider, and we have rice, and we have a llama. And that is saba, laba, then we have, uh, oh, this, okay, sama and llama, yeah? So we have uh, all these different four types of things that represent this uh, these uh, keywords, these abbreviations that are very hard to remember. And why do I do this? Because you will see that when, when we are dealing with the treatment itself, it will be easier to remember the treatment. Okay, so for LAMA, we have umeclidinium, aclidinium, theotropium, and glucopyrrolate. You see something related to clidinium, umeclidinium or aclidinium or theotropium. This is very, very similar. The name is very similar here, theotropium, with the ipratropium. And ipratropium was sama, the rice. Remember, ipratropium was rice. Okay, so let's check this out. Theotropium, we have a dry powder respimat. You remember, this device was called respimat. Then we have aclidinium, and that is called press air. Presser, this device is called presser, it's a dry powder also. Then we have umeclidinium, that is a dry powder, ellipta. Do you remember we, we, we talked about this, umeclidinium? This, this device was in the other part that we talked about, vilanterol. This was also an ellipta device. And glucopyrrolate is a breeze hailer, a dry powder breeze hailer. You remember this also, this device is called a breeze hailer. Okay, now we go on with some theory. Are medications added in a stepwise fashion or all at once in COPD? What do you think? In stepwise fashion. But in severe diseases, we give it all at the same time, which means we need to quickly treat the patients. And that is very, when it's very, very severe. But otherwise, when the patient comes to the doctor uh, routinely, he's, he's uh, regularly coming to the doctor, then we give it stepwise. Okay? And here we have a picture. You can give it once or so step wise. And which are the steps now? We can divide patients into four categories based on the gold classification A, B, C, D. Okay, that will be dealt in another video. Please check that out. A patient, what do we give? We give short acting. Do you remember short acting this uh, Sabas? So Sabas or Samas. And we can give either a Saba alone or Sama alone or these together. Okay, and that means that we have a Saba, which was an island. Sama was the rice. Then we have, as you see, a picture of that. And therefore, I made these funny pictures because then you will not forget it. So when you think of A, think of island and rice together. And then you know it, Saba and Sama. What about B category? Here we have long acting. You see, we don't have any uh, short acting one. We only have it in parenthesis. And why do we have it in parenthesis? Because that is a rescue. Rescue means that we give a long acting and it doesn't really work. And then we need to rescue the patient because the patient has a lot of symptoms. And we rescue the patient with some short acting ones. So you always use the short acting ones. And it's very convenient now because we have a picture of rescue one being an island. So we rescue the patient on the island. So remember that we always rescue it on the island. The patient is in deep water and in order to rescue the patient he, ha he has to swim to the island and then he will be rescued and there he will get rice. So, <laughs> so you, you can remember this rescue in this way. And therefore we, the, the ground, the, the basic therapy will be laba alone or lama alone or laba plus lama so this was the spider a lama or the spider and lama together and when this does not this does not work then you give the rescue which was uh, saba the island or the sama which was the rice let's see category c this is 
uh, category C. We have long acting here also. So in category B, we have long acting, but in category C, we have long acting plus we can give glucocorticoids. This is the, from, from C, we give glucocorticoids. That means that we have uh, in the number three here, LABA plus glucocorticoid. And please always use LABA for glucocorticoids, as you can see, not LAMA. LABA. So you can give LAMA or you can give LAMA plus LABA or a LABA plus glucocorticoid. And how can we picture, picture this now? We have, of course, a LAMA picture uh, and then we have a spider picture for the LABA and then we have always giving a spider with a muscle. Why muscle? Glucocorticoids are steroids. How can I picture a steroid? A guy who is taking steroids and are make, going to the gym and he's very strong. This is the way I remember it. That means I have a spider and a muscle representing that LABA and glucocorticoids can be given in type C patients. And as we said, always stepwise, always start with the first one, LAMA. Then we try the LAMA-LABA combination. If, this, that, if that does also not work, then we go on with the LABA plus glucocorticoids. We step it up. Now, category D. This is even more severe. So category A patients are the mildest one. And then we're going B, C, D. It's getting even worse. And what do we do in this case? It's really worse now. Category D, we have long acting plus glucocorticoids. And here we always use LABAs. Because in C, you could see we could use a LAMA. But in alone. But in D, we cannot use any LAMA alone. We need to use a LABA plus a LAMA or LABA plus a glucocorticoid as you saw in the previous in C1 also we can use that or we step it up now at D and we can use a LABA, LAMA and glucocorticoids. Triple therapy we call it. So you see we have a spider here and a LAMA or a spider and a muscle or a spider, a LAMA and a muscle. That's triple therapy. That's the most advanced therapy we can give this category D patient. Of course, not only pa not all patients will get it because we step it up. We, we start slow and then step it up. Why is LAMA preferred against LABA in category C and D? As you saw here, we, we, we can have LABA plus LAMA, but why, why is it here in category C? Why is LAMA preferred here as a first treatment? Why not LABA here? Because in category C and D, the definition of category C and D is high exacerbations, meaning more than two, uh, so equal to two or more than two exacerbations per year in C and D. And LAMA reduces exacerbations, so LAMA is preferred in C and D. In A and B, these, these are not related so much to exacerbations. This, uh, but C and D, we need to reduce the exacerbation. And whenever you have, see a patient now who has exacerbation, think of the helping hand of a llama. A llama will rescue this guy because he is having an exacerbation and C, so he is a category C or D mostly. And then we have to give a llama. Okay? Which type of treatment should be used for all patients with COPD for the relief of intermittent symptoms? What was the relief? What was the rescue that we talked about? The island or the rice in the island? It means short-acting ones, Saba or Sama. So rescue, short-acting, quick. Rescue with island or rice. Okay? Do Laba Lama increase lung function or reduce inflammation? There's two options here. It increases lung function. So in the spirometry, so a functional test, uh, we will see an increased amount of lung function when we use a LABA LAMA. What about glucocorticoids? Do we increase lung function or reduce inflammation? 50% chance it's reducing inflammation. So, so the LABA LAMAs will increase lung function and glucocorticoids will reduce inflammation. So muscle will reduce the inflammation in the lung. Let's see the advantages of LABA LAMA compared to glucocorticoids. We improve lung function, as we said. Better control of exacerbations. You remember, LAMA will control exacerbation. We had the picture of the guy with the LAMA. We improve the lung function. We had a picture of the spirometry being increased and less pneumonia, less uh, infection. Okay, so improve lung function, better control of exacerbation with the LAMA, and less less pneumonia. 
Name some lama lama combination. Now we come to the combinations. Well, until now we have checked them monotherapy. We have checked them alone. And now let's see the combinations. Teotropium olodaterol. Terol. Do you remember terol? What is terrorizing? That's the spider. What was the name of the spider? Laba. So here, just by checking this, we can say that olodaterol, vilanterol, indacaterol, formoterol, formoterol are all labas. Okay, and the llama one, that was the picture of the llama, and then we have teotropium, umeclidinium, glucopyrrolate, aclidinium, and so on. So let's say, let's check the first one. We have then a soft mist inhaler of teotropium olodaterol, which is a respimat type of device. Okay, and that this name is spiolto. Okay, umeclidinium vilanterol, we will have a dry powder inhaler, and that is the name of umeclidium vilanterol, as you remember, we, al we already checked it at back when we talked about vilanterol. That was this anoro, when we had the picture of three ones next to each other. And umeclidium vilanterol is anoro. Glucopyrrolate indicatorol, this is a breeze inhaler, dry powder in breeze inhaler, and this is called ultibro, for example, ultibro breeze inhaler. Then we have glucopyrrolate formoterol. We, here we have a name called bevespi. It's a metered dose inhaler. Okay. Then we have aclidinium formoterol. This is a novelizer. You may remember novelizer, and it's a dry powder inhaler. And now we come to some therapy. Can glucocorticoids be used as monotherapy? Can you give this muscle to uh, COPD patients? No. Please don't. Only with a laba. Okay. Which groups of patients can be given uh, for a lab? Uh, can be given laba plus this glucocorticoid. What, what? Which patient can we give that? C and D. Okay, we saw that in A we didn't have it, in B we didn't have it, and then uh, from C we started to have it. So from C and D we have, we can give this LABA plus glucocorticoids. Which is better, LAMA, LABA or LABA glucocorticoids for C and D patients? You would think intuitively, or, or, or based on this presentation, it's LABA glucocorticoids because we stepped it up, the person. But actually it's LAMA, LABA. LAMA is better, so we always start with that first. And if that doesn't want to work, then we give glucocorticoids. You know, glucocorticoids have a lot of uh, side effects. That's the problem with glucocorticoids. A lot of side effects, unfortunately. But when we need to use it, we need to use it. It's no question. Like, we, we cannot let the patient die of COPD just because of the side effects of glucocorticoids. There's no, no chance. But whenever you can, please don't use glucocorticoids for a long time. Steroids should not be used for a long time. But therefore, we start with Lama Lama first. Okay? So, la, Lama Lama. Name four. Now, when you see the combinations, which combinations we have? Lama plus glucocorticoids. Here you see our fluticasone. Do you remember? We had the fluticasone vilantrol in number four here. We, when we talked about vilantrol alone, that, that was the spider, that was the Lama. Then we had vilantrol combined with umeclidinium and vilantrol combined with fluticasone. And we didn't know what fluticasone is. Now we know. It's a glucocorticoid. How do we know? Because all the right side, the terols, are spider. That's a laba. That means the other one is something else. It's a, it's a, a, a glucocorticoid. Fluticasone, budesonide, mometasone, and so on. Let's check the first one. Fluticasone, salmeterol. Here we have a dry powder. This is the device. The device is called Forspiro. We haven't, been, we haven't seen this any, any, uh, uh, for, for the other ones. It was, some, some, it was called Ellipta, I think. Yeah, Ellipta it was called. It's very similar, but this is called Forspiro. And uh, the name here is Air Flusal, for example. Budesonid Formaterol, here we have a turbo hailer, a dry powder turbo hailer. And the name can be here, for example, Sumbicort. Sumbicort, very common. Mometasone Formaterol, here we have a name. That is called Dulera, Dulera, okay? And you see, it's a metered dose inhaler. We, ju we just know now all the device names, you see? And Fluticasone Villatron was this Ellipta. It's very similar to this Forspiro, but it doesn't look the same, okay? And this was the Relva. Relva was the Villanterol Fluticasone combination. Okay, and now, quick summary of the most important thing of this presentation. Medications added in a stepwise fashion, and not all at once, only when it's very severe. Then, therapy of A patients are short acting. So we have Saba alone, Sama, or Sama plus la Samba plus Sama. And then we have a picture of this. So, A, island, or rice. B, we have uh, spider, which is Laba, 
a llama or a, a spider and a llama. So a llama plus llama. And in rescue, when we need to rescue the patient, then we go on to the short acting ones. Otherwise not. See, we had a llama, llama plus llama, or llama plus glucocorticoid. As you see, we didn't choose glucocorticoid first one. We choose first the llama, then we try the llama plus the llama, and then we tried this llama plus glucocorticoid. Now remember, glucocorticoids are always, uh, always given with llama, not with llama, always with llama. So always with the spider, a spider and a muscle. Okay? Then D, we have a llama plus llama or a lava plus glucocorticoid, or triple therapy. All the three together. That's the most advanced. And that is the end of my presentation. And this is very, very intense. This whole information is huge. Okay? That means, please check this video as many times as you can. That will not only help you, it will also help me. But with the algorithm of YouTube, I will get more views. But for your sake, Please check this video and you will master CUPD and people will be amazed if you're a student or if you're a patient, the doctor will be amazed of how much you know about CUPD treatment, about stable CUPD treatment. As a student, the professors and the teachers will not believe that you know so much. They cannot understand how you did it. You know now. All the classifications, A, B, C, D. You know what to give in A, B, C, D. You know which are the subgroups of all types of sabas, of laba, lama, samas. You know all the subtypes. You also know what type of device you use. Is it a meter dose inhaler, a soft mist inhaler, a dry powder inhaler? You also know that it was related to some company's name. You know the real, you know what to take from the shelf and give it to the patient. You actually know, and you actually can combine the medications. You cannot only give them separately, you know how to combine them. So please check this video many, as many times as you can, and please make, make uh, COPD treatable, okay? We need to be able to treat COPD. And never forget the first slides that I had in this presentation. That was about stop smoking, vaccinations. And please, people who are against vaccinations, unfortunately, these people are wrong, okay? Vaccinations are an essential part of treatment. Not only in COPD, but of all other diseases that can be prevented by vaccinations. So please never go against vaccinations. And I am not paid to say this, please. I see so many children in the hospital that are getting diseases that are already eradicated, or supposed to be at, at least. And all these new, new uh, old uh, diseases are coming back because many, many more and more people are, are stopping to get the vaccination. And this is a crisis. Because the, the, the children die because of this. Because of parents not giving vaccinations of the most important vaccinations that are recommended. So please take that into consideration. Take care and have a nice day.